This is the OnePlus Nord CE 3, the CE standing for Core Edition. This time around, OnePlus seems to be offering some very important upgrades over the CE 2. Now in today's video, let's unbox the Nord CE 3 and take a look at what these upgrades are. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. Now the box might look sealed, but nah, it's already been opened since it's been shipped internationally. So let me peel off what's left of the plastic. Once open, we are greeted by this black insert. This houses the soft TPU case, the IMEI stickers, a SIM ejector tool, a NOT card with a message from OnePlus, the Red Cable Club membership card, OnePlus and NOT stickers, and finally, the quick start and safety information booklets. Let's now remove the NOT CE3 from its protective wrapper and peel the sticker off the back too. Now this back here, this finish, it's called the Aqua Surge. OnePlus also offers a grey shimmer option if the bland grey is more to your liking. Now the back you see here, it still is plastic and so are the sides. That said, to the front, if you notice, the phone, it looks larger. Well, because it is larger. This screen here, it's your standard 6.7 inches up from 6.4 on the CE2. We'll talk more about the screen once we wrap up with the unboxing. So here, uh, we've got the regular USB Type-A to Type-C cable, the red one, followed by a faster 80 watt SuperVOOC charger, which is up from 65. Now the battery capacity on the inside, it's now been increased to 5000 milliampar, up from 4500. But this 80 watt charger, it's still gonna let you charge the CE3 from 0 to 100 in a little over half an hour. OnePlus, they've done well. Now coming back to the display, it's not that this is just larger, it's also a better panel. It's got a higher refresh, 120Hz, it also happens to be a 10-bit panel. Now OnePlus does not mention the peak brightness on this phone, but it seems to get bright enough for outdoor use. Now this increase in display size means the phone's overall footprint has also grown. The CE3 is about 2mm taller and wider while being 0.4mm thicker and 11 grams heavier than its predecessor. A larger screen, a higher capacity battery, I understand why the size and weight had to increase, but to some consumers, this might mean the CE3, it might just not be as comfortable to hold and use as its predecessor. Now the CE3 still continues to come with an IP54 rating for protection against splashes and the display, it is now protected by Panda Glass instead of Gorilla Glass 5, which to some might seem like a downgrade. Anyways, let me quickly walk you around the device. We have the power and volume keys to the right, an IR blaster, the secondary microphone and speaker they reside up top, there's nothing to the left, and the primary mic and speaker alongside the USB Type-C port and SIM tray, they can be found at the bottom. As you can see, there is no alert slider or a headphone jack on the CE3, but there is however support for microSD. This tray here, it can take either two nanoSIM cards or a nanoSIM plus microSD, so it's a hybrid solution. On the inside, the CE3 is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 782G SoC. Given we've started to see phones with the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 at this price point, this is not something you're gonna call best in class, but given the CE2 had a Dimensity 900, the 782G is a good generational upgrade. Now this chip, it's paired with up to 12 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM and 256 gigs of the faster UFS 3.1 storage. On the software side of things, the Nord CE3 is running on Android 13 with OnePlus's colorified Oxygen OS 13.1 on top, I like how OnePlus hasn't really included many third-party apps, maybe Netflix, but that's it. We do get the improved ZenSpace and Orelax apps here. There's also an app to let you take advantage of that IR blaster and control appliances around the house. Now the software on the CE3 in the limited time I've spent with it, it felt responsive, apps did launch quick. The haptics in particular felt quite nice, that's because there's an X-axis linear motor on the inside. The fingerprint scanner, it's under the display, it's of the optical variety, I had no issues with it. 2D face unlock also felt flawless. It's got a 16 megapixel sensor with an f2.4 lens. And here are some quick selfie samples I shot. How do you think they turned out? Let me know in the comments. OnePlus promises two years of Android version upgrades alongside three years of security patches for this phone. Now to the back, we have a triple camera setup. The primary is Sony's 50 megapixel IMX890, the same sensor from the OnePlus 11. Now given we are seeing the IMX 890 on so many phones these days, it makes me wonder if it's awesome that brands are providing a flagship sensor for mid-rangers or did OnePlus just get away with using a mid-range sensor on the flagship OnePlus 11? <laughs> what do you think? 
Now jerks apart, this is a 1 by 1.56 inch sensor that's been paired with an optically stabilized f1.8 lens. It seems to shoot rich images with good dynamic range. These are samples I quickly shot around the office. Now video does stop out at 4K30 due to the limitation of the chip. So how do you think this footage turned out? Leave a comment. Now the secondary, it's another Sony sensor unchanged from the last time around, the IMX355. It's an 8 megapixel sensor that's been paired with an f2.2 ultra wide lens, one that has 112 degree field of view. Now the third sensor is your token 2 megapixel macro. Now as you look at more samples I shot with these cameras, let's talk about pricing. The CE3 starts at 2699 for the A128 and this seems to be a 2000 rupee hike over the CE2's launch price. Now guys, to be honest, I've gotten tired of brands hiking prices every launch. Now yes, I see that the CE3 does bring with it a whole lot of upgrades, but at the same time, I wish they could have kept the starting price the same as the last time around. So what do you guys think of this 27k asking price? Do you feel the CE3 is a non-starter given something like the Poco F5 with the 7 Plus Gen 2 is available at a similar pricing? Or do you feel this is something that's still worth considering? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.